Generator functions have been in JavaScript since 2016, but have you ever actually used them? Or do you know anybody using them? Even after so much time, they seem to still be a very niche thing. But there is one situation where I actually do use generators quite frequently. First, let's get the basics of generators down by first talking about iterators and iterables like array and map that have a built-in mechanism that defines how to iterate through their values. We can actually make any object iterable by defining a next method on it that returns an object containing a value and a boolean indicating whether there are any more values. That might look like this. Every time we call next, we get the next value in the sequence, and we can define that behavior however we like. To make this even cooler, we can use the symbol.iterator symbol to define this behavior, which will now allow us to use our own custom iterable with anything that accepts iterables, like a for of loop or the spread operator. The dx isn't great here though, and that's why we have generator functions like this. Instead of defining a next function, we just yield a value. Then when something like the spread operator or a for of loop is consuming the iterator this generator function creates, it will take the first yielded value as its first next value, the second yielded value as the second next value, and so on. Now onto the part where I'm actually making use of these concepts, and it's not exactly by choice. I use a library called Motion Canvas to make a lot of the animations for my videos, and the elevator pitch is basically that it lets you create animated presentations using TypeScript. You can create scenes, one of which you are watching right now, like this. We have code that triggers creating various elements on the screen, waiting certain periods of time, animating things, and so on. But you may notice we are making use of yield here, and this function definition has an asterisk which means we are doing something with generators here. This is fundamentally how Motion Canvas works. We define a scene with a generator function. That generator function will also make use of other child generator functions, like this wait for function. And our scene generator function is passed to a mechanism in the Motion Canvas source code that handles executing the scene by consuming the generator or more specifically, it is consuming the iterator that the generator function creates. To make it easier to understand what exactly is going on here, let's instead take a look at a super bare bones implementation of the fundamental approach Motion Canvas is using. So I have a scene defined as a generator function. I have my own simplified implementation of a wait for generator function that serves the purpose of pausing the scene for some arbitrary amount of time. And I have a run scene function that can be passed any scene generator function and it will execute it. So let's step through what happens here. We kick everything off by calling this run scene function and passing it the generator function for our scene. Since our scene is a generator, it is going to be yielding values. And we can trigger those values by calling next on the iterator our generator function creates. The idea is that we just keep calling next on it for as long as there are more values. And since we are dealing with animating a scene here, we trigger calling that next function on every animation frame. So what will happen is we will call next for the first time, which will invoke our my scene generator. It is going to execute until we take the first value yielded from this scene generator. In this case, we just have a console log and then we call yield with a value of hello. This will cause the execution of the generator to stop and control would be yielded back to our run scene function. The next animation frame would be triggered, causing the scene generator to be invoked once more and the execution would continue from after the previous yield, which would cause this console.log to be executed. What we have done here is not entirely useful though. All we have really done is delay our console log from executing by one animation frame. Where things get more interesting is when we use yield with an asterisk to yield to another generator, which is what our wait for implementation is. Rather than just yielding a single value, our wait for is going to yield multiple values over time. So now when our run scene function triggers next on our my scene generator again, we will now hit this statement. This will invoke our child wait for generator, 
And what this is going to do is it will keep yielding values in this while loop until the amount of time supplied to the wait for has passed. So the first time we ask for a value from our wait for iterator, it will yield an undefined value. Request animation frame will trigger another step. Again, it will yield, causing control to go back to our run scene function. Request animation frame will trigger another step. Again, it will yield, causing control to go back to our run scene function. Another step will be triggered. Again, it yields and it keeps doing this over and over. Eventually enough time will have passed, one second or 10 seconds or however long we want to wait for. And our wait for generator will yield no more values and be done because it will finally break out of the while loop. At this point, the next time a step is triggered, it will finally hit this console log statement. And if we check in the console, we can indeed see this statement is delayed by about one second. So now that our first wait for is no longer yielding values, the code can just keep executing until it runs into the next yield. And so that's where our second wait for generator will come into play. So our second wait for generator will be triggered and this same process of yielding values for a certain amount of time will repeat until about two seconds have passed and then this code will be triggered. The end result here is that we have a nice and ergonomic way to control the timing of when things get executed in our scene. This is a pretty basic example, but this is the fundamental idea. And then you can build out much more interesting and complex generator functions to do all sorts of interesting things. Motion Canvas has a bunch of these built in that you can use for common tasks, but you can also create your own custom ones. So I figured it might be interesting to share this example of where I'm actually using generators for day-to-day -day work. If you have any other examples, feel free to drop them in the comments. And if you found this video useful, a like or subscribe before you go would be greatly appreciated. And I hope to see you back here again.